Hi, I'm Ron with Amazing Mile Marker Stops, and we're in Urbana, Virginia, on the Rappahannock River. We've arrived at Urbana, and it's kind of eerie because if you're one of our patrons that gets to follow our track, if you look at our track on the Garmin map, whatever map Garmin pulls up when they use those tracks, you'll see that the, the dock layout is vastly different from the one you would see on Google Maps. And the reason for that is in 2016, there was a horrible fire here and this entire dock behind me, which was mostly covered slips at that time, was destroyed. Um, it just, I've seen videos of, of the fire and it was just horrific. The, um, they've rebuilt it with these brand new docks. Um, I, my heart goes out to anybody who was involved in that or suffered a loss or knew somebody that suffered a loss. I know at least two people died in the fire. Something like 50 boats were damaged and at least I think 21 were a total loss. Um, I, like I say, if you watch the videos, there, there's no way a boat could survive that fire. So, like I said, our heart goes out to anybody who's involved in that. It kind of makes us feel a little weird uh, when we're looking at the map and, and see how different it looks from the Google map and we realize why. But um, hopefully we'll do them honor and, and uh, do a good video while we're here. So we're going to go into town, check it out, and see what there is to see. On the graves, in the cracks of a thousand leaves, somewhere in between, our past and our future rolling over, all the dividing things. I always like it when towns do this. Throughout the town they've got these signs, each one is numbered and uh, they've got these QR codes on them. So all you have to do is scan it with your phone and it'll tell you what, what's important about this building. Are you still listening? Want to be heard by you? Slow fall into Talk about not building them the way they used to. This house behind me, I don't know when it was built, but the first record of being sold was apparently in 1763. And that's a nice house. I live in it. 1763. Can you imagine? So this is the kind of the oyster section, I guess, and Floyd was telling us about some of the stuff that, that this represents. This right here is oyster dredge, and these were used in Maryland um, to dredge for oysters, and they'd have big ones of these, three, four, behind a boat, and they just travel along and they just rip up the bottom, and uh, Virginia outlawed. So they invented these patent tongs to uh, use them from a boat and they go down and they grab the, uh, the oysters and bring them up without destroying the bottom. 
So that's a good advancement there. Um, of course, you know, we're talking back when. So uh, pretty cool. And uh, he has a lot of different shipping containers here. Over here were some cans. Uh, they look like paint cans, but that's how they shipped oysters. So they put oysters and uh, oysters in the can, seal the can up, put the cans in a crate and fill ice all the way around it. And again, that's how they shipped it. So pretty interesting. So it used to be that if you wanted to buy oysters, they had to be sold in this bucket. And that's, that's how you had to buy them was out of the bucket. And this bucket uh, made a bushel of oysters. And it was actually a law that they had to be sold out of here. It was a misdemeanor if you sold them other than out of this bucket. So that's kind of cool. Ends up certain futures near. Well, I've never heard of this before, but this long spear, I don't know, it's got to be like 20 foot long, is uh, used for eel fishing. Apparently in the winter, when the, the water freezes over, they cut a hole in the ice, just like ice fishing. But they put this pole down and they jab around and they feel for eels and, and gig them. And then I guess they'd eat the eels. But that's the first I've heard of that one. I'm sure most of you are familiar with oysters and you know their size about like that or so. Here in Urbana, they used to grow them big. Apparently they've kind of been cleaned out. They don't have them anymore, but they used to have huge oysters in Urbana. Check these things out. That thing's got to be at least eight inches. That's huge. We're at the Urbana Museum. That's this building behind us. I'm almost as tall as you now. I tell you what, she's cheating. She's, she's up on a higher step than me. <laughs> <laughs> but this building was built in the 1700s and today they've it was a general store back then and today they've turned it into a museum and uh, really interesting come check this out and also the house across the street was also built in the 1700s and it's i think being used as a private residence there are just lots of houses around urbana that were built back in the 1700s and they're still in use today it's just mind-boggling and somebody told me that there's more houses here in Urbana than in Williamsburg that were built back in that era and are still being used today. So they also uh, stored the tobacco, I guess, downstairs. The hill that's right here, let's see. Yep, <laughs> right there. <laughs> I'm trying to get it in the camera. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, the water, <laughs> the water, is back there that hill goes right down to the water which you can see um, back behind me there and uh, they would take the barrels they would take the barrels of uh, tobacco and it would take a couple of guys with a, a board i guess and some kind of mechanism to push the tobacco down in, you know, pack it in those barrels tight, which made the barrels real, really heavy. And then they would roll those barrels down that hill to the ships that were waiting right there on the water. So it was, it was very convenient to be able to roll the tobacco down that was being stored in, in these two buildings. Mm. This behind me is one of the treasures of Urbana. It's a John Mitchell map. John Mitchell lived in the 1700s. Uh, he was a doctor who was actually educated here. 
uh, went over to England later in life. And while there, he drew this map uh, of the Americas. And it was considered so accurate that it was used by everybody back then. Um, in fact, it was used by the Americans and British to negotiate the treaty of 1783, whenever it was, at the end of the Revolutionary War. And they used this map to determine where the boundaries were. And uh, it's considered so accurate that even as late as 1980, there was a fishing boundary dispute between, uh, I guess us and Nova Scotia. And they used this map to determine where the boundary really was to settle that dispute. I mean, that's pretty amazing for something somebody drew in 1750 or whenever it was. So this building was used as a general store back in the 1700s. They have invoices from back then that show that they had over 500 items inside this building. What's really cool is if you look down at the floor, you can actually see right on through the cracks. building here behind me which is what the sign is talking about is the oldest building in Urbana and uh, built around 1740s late 1740s and it's still in use today as a business Visit amazing mile marker stops. <laughs>